there's a really high chance that this is one of the best Call of Duties, if not the best. Hello everyone, and I hope you are all having an amazing day. And if not, here's a kiss from Albert. <laughs> The Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 beta was quite the experience. It had the most matches, hours, and players across all of the Call of Duty beta history. And that's an impressive milestone. With that being said, today we're going to be covering all the positives and negatives that we experienced in this beta. And I'm going to throw in a few suggestions provided by me and other people in the community that could potentially make this the best Call of Duty ever. Before we dive into the important topics that this beta has to offer, I just want to mention that the beta is not a draft. It's most likely final. So yes, we've seen around 20% of the game. But the rest of the 80% will most likely feel similar with a few fine tunes and adjustments made by the developer team and the community feedback. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be excited because the 80% that we did not see will be Warzone 2, the new game mode DMZ, more maps and more weapons and a lot of content to discover. The important topics that everyone has been talking about during this beta were the movement mechanics, the anti-cheat, the time to kill, the gunsmith, audio quality, skill-based matchmaking, Combat mechanics, the UI, oh, I have a lot of things to say for you, my guy. The nameplates, the perk system, gun mechanics, kill streaks and animations, and last but not least, map design and graphics. And now let's talk about movement. This has been the biggest controversial topic that upset all the YY and Grows and Iskara skins. And you might hate me for saying this, but hear me out to the end. The movement is almost still the same. Yes, movement in Modern Warfare 2019 was more versatile easier and you had a lot of flexibilities and you didn't have to offer any sacrifice to be like that but if you want the same movement as modern warfare 2019 i got you and it has two simple solutions and the options head over to weapon mount activation and make sure you turn on double tap ads and that should be done on both controller or mouse and keyboard then make sure that you turn on automatical tactical sprint and turn off grounded and automatic ground mount and after you put on these settings all you have to do is slide aim down sight twice and jump. Now after you put on these settings you will notice that you can do a slot cancel but it's not consistent and feels a little bit slow. To tackle that make sure that you equip the double time and the amp perk and trust me after that you'll be YYing like you're back on TikTok same as before. The sacrifice in this case is that you must customize your loadout in a specific way to have a movement advantage like before. And there is one small thing that I need to mention. Since now you have to slide cancel by having double tap to weapon mount you need to make sure to time your slide cancel. If you try to slide cancel near a corner, you will end up mounting your weapon by mistake. And being real here, I actually like the direction Call of Duty is taking. You can still have the fast, sweaty, YY TikTok movement from Modern Warfare 2019. And you can still have the OG COD movement, which is a little bit slower. The only thing is you have to pick what you want and do a sacrifice for that. If you don't like that, then it's probably because you're lazy and you want all the advantages without any work for it. And now for the anti-cheat, the big boy here. Before you start saying that Modern Warfare 2 is going to be filled with cheaters because you saw the cheat developers have working cheats, remember this, when they announced Ricochet back in Warzone 1, all the cheat devs were flexing how they bypassed the anti-cheat, and what happened a few weeks later? I barely saw a hacker, maybe one every two months. I used to get 10 plus each day. And remember, this is a beta. The anti-cheat is probably not active, and just watching all these cheaters and learning how to tackle them just like the last time. Call of Duty and Activision are doing a great job in this place. Thumbs up to them. Thank you to them. And just have some patience, guys. The time to kill seemed very fast in general, giving minimum to zero time to react to a situation which promotes more passive gameplay, aka camping. But while doing some research about the time to kill, what seems to be a very fast one turned out to be a regular average Call of Duty one. There are other factors that contribute to the time to kill, like who aimed first, and if the weapon you are using is effective at long or close range, and more. This chart provided by the exclusive ace shows that this isn't the fastest time to kill in Call of Duty history. He made a great informative video about it by the way, I will link it down in the description below. And personally, I would love the time to kill to be a little bit longer by adding some HP and rechecking the damage multipliers for all guns at all ranges. But even if it stays the same, I'm fine with that. As for the new gunsmith, we got debated. They called it revolutionary at the COD event. I call it straight trash. They said now it's easier to unlock attachments because they work on different guns of the same family tree. Yes, that is true. But they didn't mention that now we have to fully unlock a weapon and level it up to the max before moving to the next one. I can't be 100% sure about how it is as we are limited in the beta, but a simple solution, use the old system that made sense and just make it quicker to unlock everything and leveling them up by reducing the required XP to do so. So simple yet so effective. 
I am loving but hating the audio right now. We went from not hearing any footsteps to footsteps being so loud that nobody is moving unless they have that silence on. And again, more passive gameplay. But for me, this was a step in the right direction indeed. All that is required is to tone down the audio just a bit. When it comes to fighting, there are a few unwelcome changes. The time to fire while sliding is heavily reduced. Whether with the arcade or realistic direction card is taking, it doesn't make sense that it takes that much time when my finger is already on the trigger. Sprint to fire and ADS times feel good in some areas and not in others, especially with SMGs. Where adding an attachment that adds the ADS time outweighs two attachments that reduce it by a significant amount. That doesn't make sense to me. And some guns will feel a little bit clunky. And also, spray speed is basically non-existent in this game. I would love if it's been added just a bit. The UI, the UI, the user interface. Whoever made this needs to be fired ASAP. I don't know where to add people. I don't know where to invite people. It took me three hours just to understand how the basic things work there. Like the Modern Warfare 2019 UI was so simple yet effective. Why always change everything? It worked before, keep it along that line, please. The minimap doesn't have to have red dots, I get it. But in this case, there's a few things that I feel people are neglecting. First of all, it negates the point of having a silencer on for the most part. And also there are deaf people that play this game and actually care about the minimap and having red dots on it. When it comes to the no nameplates problem, personally, I don't like it in its current state. Yes, I can know who is friendly and who is not by seeing the blue dot over my teammates, but it's not as visible as the enemy red nameplate like before. And if they don't plan on reversing it and keeping it as it is, at least add a small idea that can balance things out, like having a perk, like the recon perk for plate range in 2019. But in this game, instead of giving us range to see nameplates, it gives us the ability to see them to a certain range. Let's talk about the perks and their system. It's interesting and filled with game-changing ideas, but that can be a good or a bad thing. And in this case, it's most likely bad. Yeah, it's nice that you can have four perks at a certain time, but in return, you only start with two, and you gain the third and the fourth after a certain time while you're playing the game, as you can see in the bottom of the screen. As for the people asking for Dead Silence to be a perk, yeah, honestly, that seems kind of broken in my eyes, where permanently being silenced is a little bit too much. Some people say high alert can counter that, like Warzone, but for me, I'm happy with that sounds being a field upgrade, but I'm not a fan of the sound it makes when activated, especially in Search and Destroy. When it comes to gun mechanics, I'm so happy to see that there is more recoil now, and it's not an easy shooter like previous COD titles. A much needed skill gap, in my opinion. The only issue I have is the visual recoil effects like smoke coming out of a barrel. If I want to use an SMG for a mid-range fight, I can't see anything. When it comes to kill streaks. I like them, but I hate a few things about them. For example, the advanced UAVs need to show constant errors, in my opinion. The UAV animation is a bit longer now, and Dead Silence now has an animation. I prefer if they were not that long, but I see why people don't like this, and I agree. Reload animations are very different. The typical COD arcade idea was that you can cancel a reload at any time, but now it's a little bit more realistic. Where if the new mag is being put in, you cannot shoot until the reload animation is completely done. Yes, it's not the same like before, but I like it for one and only one reason. You gotta think more now before it reloading. And I'm pretty sure the casuals might not like that a lot, but it is what it is. Map design and graphics. We didn't see all the maps yet so far, but I love it. With huge maps on game modes like Invasion and Ground War, there is a lot of room for different range of combat, a vast variety of ways to play whether you want to be passive, <coughs> camp, or be aggressive, and all the buildings are usable all around. Regular multiplayer maps are a 50-50 for me, as I didn't get to see all the maps, but I do like the classic 3-lane design being kept, while also adding a lot of extra space in each lane to bring in both open and linear designs in one map. For me, that's a big and smart win. As for the graphics, I'm loving them. And that's with the person running everything on very low and without NVIDIA filters. And last but not least, I want to thank everyone for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to stay up to date with all the Call of Duty changes coming in soon. And looking at all of this information, there's a really high chance that this is one of the best Call of Duties, if not the best. And that's coming from a person that rarely compliments it. Guys, what do you think of the changes so far? Do you feel like you relate to them the same way I do or do you have different opinions? If so, let me know down in the comments and if you have other ideas that should be changed in this game as well, I would love to hear them.